you guys notice anything different about my teeth? So for the low price of $2,500, the buy-in for a 510 game, I got Invisalign Lite in about seven months. Hopefully I'll have a perfect smile. I just got my retainers put on, the very first ones put on today. It was a process. It took like an hour and a half. This is actually the first time I've talked with them in my mouth. I kind of have a little bit of a lisp. But for this video, we're going to be going over a 510 session I played at Harris Pompano Beach. It was a private game, had some good action, some big pots. Let's go. All right, getting ourselves right into the action. We have Ace-8 of Hearts in the big blind. There's a call under the gun for $10. There's a raise to $50 under the gun plus one. Cutoff player calls 50. I decide to three bet here out of position to 250 bucks, thinking that maybe I could take all this money down pre-flop, but that doesn't happen when three players make the call. Four ways, three bet pot to king two seven with two hearts. We flop the nut flush draw on a king high board, all in all, pretty good board for our particular range. I'm going to see bet here $400. The under the gun player who limped for 10 and then cold called 250 makes the call and the other players make the fold. We are now heads up to the ace of clubs on the turn. This gives me top pair in a three bet pot along with the nut flush draw. A lot of people would be betting this turn card as it gives us top pair, but I actually think it's a good spot to check over to my opponent. I don't think I'm able to get three streets of value from a worse hand on this board. And I feel like if I check the turn and he checks back, I could get value on the river against the King X hand. By checking this turn, I can also allow him to bet with worse hands like pocket pairs, flush draws, bluffs. So I check to him and he does fire out a $900 bet. It's a pretty big bet for this game, but I'm not folding. So I make the call. River card, Jack of Diamonds. It's red. But it's not the heart we wanted. I check. He checks back and shows pocket sevens for a flopped set versus our nut flush draw and ace on the turn. And just like that, we lose a pretty big one the very first hand. I do get a tiny bit back when I call a raise with pocket deuces and flop quads. I win this hand when both of my opponents fold on the turn, leading into this next hand where I've got pocket kings on the button. There's a hijack raise to 75. I re-raise on the button to $250 before the hijack player now re-raises me again to 475 bucks. A four bet here out of position. Pocket kings, I mean, it's the second best hand you can get pre-flop. Never folding here, but I actually think this is a spot where we just want to call in position, try to keep him in there with all of his bluffs, all of his worst pocket pairs. And of course, we see an ace side board. Ugh, not great when you're holding pocket kings. My opponent bets 375. I think I could fold here, but I also think he may bet this flop with some of his bluffs that he has pre-flop. And also hands like jacks or queens. So if I call here and he checks the turn, then maybe we can check back and get to showdown and win against queens and jacks. If he bets again, we'll just most likely fold, which is exactly what happens. Turn card pairs the board. He bets $1,200. We fold and use our button to see his cards. And he shows ace queen of hearts. So he four bet kind of light. I mean, it's a good hand. Got that three outer ace on the flop, and we lose again. Many hours later, I get into a dreamy spot where there's a raise to 75, three calls, and I look down at aces in the small blind. I bump it here to $400 out of position. Only the early position raiser makes the call, and everybody else folds. Aces heads up, you're most likely going to win around 80% of the time. Let's see if this is one of those times. Flop comes out king 7-2 with two hearts. Last time I played a three bet pot with this guy, he flopped a set with pocket sevens. I hope he doesn't have sevens this time. I continue for a $250 bet and my opponent makes the call. Turn card is a nine of hearts. Shouldn't change anything unless he has king nine or pocket nines. I think this is just a spot where we want to try to go for three streets of value. If he's got an ace king, a king queen, a king jack hand. I don't think he's folding those hands. If he has a combo flush draw and straight draw as well, I don't think he's folding those either. So I fire out a $700 bet. If my opponent calls here, he'll leave himself with around $1,800 left for me to go all in on the river. 
But he folds. Later told me he had pocket sixes. So we faded the set that time. Won a small one here with pocket aces. We are trending back in the right direction. Earlier on, we were down about $2,000. And now we are just about even on the session. At the time of recording this voiceover, I'm about 12 hours into my new Invisalign trays. And I have a video for you guys that kind of sums up how I feel like I talk right now. One night. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's good. Uh, you know what, man? Those wooden teeth are killing me, man. That lisp is stupid. Well, it's I think the wooden teeth is the whole thing that's shaving this thing. You for sound me. ridiculous. No, I don't. I, you sound, I think it sounds pretty good. I'm not losing the teeth, let's just move past that. We play a pretty big one up next. I call a raise on the button with Queen Jack, and we go six ways to Jack 7 3, giving me top pair Queen Kicker. The action checks all the way to the cutoff, who announces a $500 bet. With top pair, I don't think I can raise. Definitely can't fold in this game in position, so I make the call. I'm not feeling great about my hand versus this $500 sizing. I mean, he could have King Jack, Ace Jack, Jack 7, Pocket 7s, Pocket 3s. But when the turn card is a queen, giving me top two pair, I'm feeling pretty good and even better when my opponent checks over to me. The reason I feel pretty good about my hand, obviously top two pair, but also I don't think he's ever going to be checking a set of sevens or a set of threes, so we shouldn't be getting coolered here. I think a lot of the time he's going to have a jack x holding that bet out on the flop, and then now is a little bit scared of this overcard queen. Obviously going to be betting here, but I want to make it a sizing that he can still call with jack nine, jack ten, ace jack. Make it $600, and my opponent makes the call. River card is a five, doesn't change anything, I mean, I don't think. I don't think he's got pocket fives. He checks over to me, and now I have to decide what I should bet here on this river. The pot is already pretty big, around $2,700. I decided to go with a $2,000 bet here on the final card with my top two pair, trying to really target those Jack X holdings or maybe some smaller two pairs that he could possibly have. Looking back at this hand while I'm editing, I just think I bet way too big on this river. I think I should be going something like one third size of the pot or even one quarter size of the pot, exploitatively trying to get a hero call from a Jack X hand. I think I was just too greedy here betting $2,000. This bet just isn't going to get called that often from the range that he's most likely going to have, which is exactly what happens. My opponent folds. I show him my cards and he tells me that's exactly what he put me on. But he didn't say that he had a jack. I think he probably had 9-10 for an open-ended straight draw on the turn. That would be my guess. Either way, another pot being pushed in our direction. I've noticed somewhat of a trend here at Harris when I'm playing in this game. I start off pretty fast and sometimes lose two, three, four, five thousand dollars, $5,000 and then spend the rest of the night clawing myself out of the hole. That's kind of like what happened earlier on in this session. I was down a couple thousand. Now I'm up a couple thousand. Leading into this next hand, when I peel back, red kings. Nice. I raise to 75 and get two callers. And again, for the second time this session, an ace comes on the flop when I've got pocket kings. My opponents check to me. I decide to check this one back. Turn card's another ace, which I think is one of the best cards in the deck. Both of them check to me again. I definitely think it's safe now to put out a bet. I make it $200. Small blind calls $200 and the big blind thinks about it for a little bit of time and then eventually calls. So once they check twice to me and then check call in the turn, I don't think either one of them has an ace, but it still is possible that they could. River cards a three, double pairing the board. If they check to me, I may just play it safe and check this one back. But that doesn't happen. Small blind checks, and now the big blind leads out for a $700 bet. And right away, I just thought, there's no way I'm ever good here. He must have me beat. This just doesn't seem like a bluffing line. Not that this opponent is a really critical thinking poker player. He just kind of goes off feel. But honestly, I just don't think my kings are good here. So I fold thinking he could have an ace or a three. Small blind folds, and... My opponent doesn't show his cards, so I don't know. Maybe I should have thought about this one a little bit longer. Maybe I should have hero called, but just don't think he's bluffing there multi-way. I don't think our kings are good. Leading in to the last hand of the night.
What better way to end a poker vlog than with pocket aces? Under the gun, I raised a $75. Button player calls $75. Small blind player who let out last hand and maybe cracked my pocket kings or maybe bluffed me makes the call for $75. Big blind calls $75 and we're four ways to king 10-7 with two clubs. Checks to me, I bet $225 and only the small blind player makes the call. So we're heads up in position to the four of clubs bringing in that front door flush. He checks to me and I decided to check this one back. River cards an eight and now he reaches down for chips and eventually fires out a $400 bet. I don't really like this. I'm losing to two pairs, losing to some straights, losing to some flushes, but I'm never folding so I make the call and he shows king six for top pair. Aces are gonna beat king six and this kind of sums up what happens when you go through somewhat of a downswing is that you're kind of scared to go for thin value spots. I mean, I had aces versus top pair. I probably could have bet the flop, bet the turn, and bet the river and made more money. But instead, I kind of played it a little bit passive, a little bit scared, and didn't end up winning the max. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in the outro. But for now, the game comes to a close. We end up racking up our chips, heading to the cage, cashing out for a little over a $1,000 win. Just like everything, we're going through this journey together. Oh, shit. Ah. Oh. Mother effer, that hurts. Mmm. Oh. Late night meal of champions. Got some scrambled eggs, some toast, and then some half baked Oof. and rogue. And a special guest who I'm going to introduce now. This is a newcomer to the vlog. Her name is is River and she's the cutest little puppy ever. So I haven't introduced her to the vlog yet because I've just been busy and haven't really, come on, haven't really taken the time to, you know, completely introduce her yet. But I rescued her. I rescued her uh, just about three months ago or so. She is a beautiful little lab mix She's just, she's super great. She's pretty destructive though. She's already like ripped my couch a little bit at the bottom. She's ripped, I have to make sure everything's gone. Um, but she's just really cute and she loves Rogue. They play all the time. Basically, I was thinking I'm gone, you know, playing poker for hours and it's good for Rogue to have someone to play with because um, he just kind of sits here by himself. So... Yeah, I thought it was good to get him a little sister, a little playmate, uh, and she's been great so far. She sleeps 10 hours, no problem, um, doesn't really bark. She peed in the house one time. She's like six months old. She's great. Other than the fact that she's like ripping things up, like if I leave anything out, a shoe, a t-shirt, a sock, like my dad was here visiting and she ripped up his computer mouse, she ripped up his... his uh, suitcase so she's pretty destructive but she is a cutie aren't you you can see the bottom of the shelf there she ripped up rogue likes her right good boy anyway before my food gets cold over there let's talk a little bit about how being on a downswing affects your play and right now i'm going through that i have been on a downswing the last two and a half months and sometimes you play a little bit scared money sometimes you play a little bit passive sometimes you don't go for those spots for those thin value spots for those big bluffs because you've just been burned i mean it, it like i would say this it's like the same thing when um you know you've been burned by women or burned by men and you're just like 
screw it, I'm done dating, I'm not gonna get back out there. The same thing, when you get burned by the cards over and over and over again, you're just like, I'm just gonna call here with aces, I'm just gonna check back. So that last hand with pocket aces, I could have just bet, 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 and got called by king six, I checked back the turn, I just called the river, and I have to try to think about that, I have to try to slow down my thinking and, and try to go for those max value spots um, instead of just kind of playing the passive uh, route, which, I still think it was a fine play, but yeah, I mean, when you're going through a downswing, you're you're gonna you're gonna have some times where you're not gonna play your best. Hey, cuties, River, good girl. You're gonna have times when you don't play your best, and uh, you know that's just. How it goes you want to try to go back learn and i feel like i learned a lot in this video <laughs> this is what she does all the time she's just licking the shit out of rogue and he's just taking it all right hey um but yeah i feel like i actually learned a decent amount through this video just with my bet sizings and some mistakes that i made that i'm gonna try not to make in the future but hope you guys enjoyed this one please like comment subscribe until next time i'll see ya See ya. Okay.